Hey guys, this is Dave with Valor Fire Training again for our next episode of Q&A. We have the one and the only John Buttrick from Coastal Fire Training. How's it going, dude? Good, sir. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. So uh, so John and I go uh, way, way back, like, I don't know, a year. <laughs> Fair enough. So, so John and I met down at Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, I obviously have been following your guys' stuff for a while. Uh, and then we met when you came down to do your uh, <clears throat> respectful entry class and, and talk about all things forcible entry. And uh, we definitely hit it off, man. So I had some forcible entry questions come across my desk and I was like, oh, I already know who to call on this one. So uh, I appreciate you graciously uh, offering to come in and, and do your stuff. So. Yeah, man. Uh, it's always a, always a pleasure to talk to you. I think we uh, always spend about an hour off, uh, off camera at, talking at, at least. least. At yeah. Least. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is the late night episode. Uh, it's 11 o'clock my time, about midnight your time. And uh, we're just fitting it in when our schedules can, dude. It's, it's uh, busy for both of us. We both got stuff going on, but uh, I, I do appreciate it very much. Thank so, you. So we have, uh, our question comes from, let me pull back up. All right, so our question comes from Al, and he is in, oh, he didn't say where he was from. So our question comes from Al, and he was asking about respectful entry, or through the lock entry, rather. And he wanted to know uh, really why it's beneficial for uh, the citizens, and also why it's beneficial for firefighters. And then his second part of the question was, I don't feel like my department would buy into this. How can I get them to be receptive? And I think that that's not uncommon. I mean, whether you're talking about forcible entry or, uh, you know, hose line mechanics or truck manufacturers, it, it, everybody has their opinions. Um, and so if the group wants something or if the department wants to go in a certain direction and maybe there's some people that aren't as receptive, you know, that's tough. I think we've all dealt with that. That's, that's a pretty common theme in the uh, fire service. So we can start with either or, you know, you can, you can talk about kind of the inception of through the lock and why you think it's important, uh, or we can kind of start off with how to get buy-in, but it's up to you, man. Uh, so I think the buy-in piece is important. Uh, understanding the history and, you know, where we've come and where we are now, uh, obviously just as important, but um, the buy-in, uh, you know, it's like, it's like a hose. It's like a nozzle. Um, you know, I, I dare say, I mean, you were talking earlier about uh, disagreements, um, you know, to try to get everyone to agree on uh, doing things a little bit different all at once, you know, in unison, uh, you know, generally where you work, um, that's probably not going to happen. Right. So, uh, you know, how do you create buy-in uh, for us? You know, my, my experience, uh, you know, with, uh, Shout out Roy Berry and George Best. We were up at Station 5 and, um, you know, a little bit slower of a house and we had some time and we were fortunate enough to come across a lot of locks, a lot of locks. And uh, we just started tinkering, right? And um, and it was, as you know, Al said, but uh, there was no buy-in, right? Fair to say there was there was no buy-in except for amongst us, right? And, uh, you know, so that, that uh, that starts to self doubt and all that. And you're like, man, well, why don't they love this as much as I do? You know? So, uh, but a great group of guys up there and eventually through calls, through actual entries and a lot of training, um, it, it drastically changed. I can say within a year, um, we were doing a video project for the city and, um, you know, things got the, the buy-in that, the the entries and the success created the buy-in right so um trying to tell somebody how how great it's going to work or what it's going to do or how it's going to benefit you or the citizen um you know that used to be the first 10 slides of my powerpoint you can talk about that stuff forever um but getting in taking care of what you need to do which is what they they pay us to do and then getting out being able to resecure whatever the occupancy is and leave right? Clear it. So alarm drop, you're going home and EMS call the, the person that tends to maybe the person that you just took to the hospital doesn't need to come fix the door or hold down the residence. They can go to the hospital, things like that. Yeah. Well, and so 
a little bit of the background, uh, you know, I know you and I have shared similar stories about carrying our own irons, uh, you know, and having our own tools. And for me, when I started learning the stuff that you were putting out there, when I started kind of uh, expanding on, you know, I always tried to be as respectful as I could. But I mean, there's a difference between damaging a deadbolt and breaking out a window pane on a, on a window. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, for me, kind of the big aha moment at my career department, because uh, I always caught shit for carrying my own irons. And they'd be like, hey, man, why do you carry a little duffel bag with you? And I'm like, well, I got a bunch of cool wizard shit in there. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. And wow. so we actually, the first call that I used it on, uh, we had a lockout and this lady had locked herself out of the house. Her like three or four year old kid was inside. She's freaking out. You know, we went through the normal questions. Do you have any other way in or any of your windows unlocked? We checked everything. Uh, and they were getting ready to pop the door. And I'm like, hey, hold on a second, guys. And I popped the door handle off and we went in there with the carry key and just popped it open and it was literally like five seconds in, we resecured the deadbolt and the, and the lock. Um, and it was, we were in and out. And, and when we got back to the station, my captain was like, so that's why you carry that duffel bag. And I go, yeah, he goes, you're going to show everybody on our shift how to do that. I was like, yeah. okay. So yeah, by showing them it, it, we really got that point across. So two things uh, that come to mind with that story. So back to the buy-in, I mean, there were there were people that were significant in our leadership and that people that I looked up to, right? They were like, man, that that stuff, like just it was just the buy-in wasn't there, right? Older gentlemen been in the department for a long time. It's not how business was conducted there. But over and over, and then eventually um it flipped, right? And they were coming to us, like, hold this truck, give me this one, things like that, right? So we were able to, to just further prove that this stuff was working. Um, you know, the dynamics of every department and every individual are a little different. So the success that the program sees, you know, is, uh, is varying in each organization, but it, this stuff works, right? So like when you understand how to do it, um, and it's, it's generally pretty simple stuff. Um, the, the benefit that is, is given to that lady, her, kid that's inside the worries that she has now that you've left her door destroyed right because let's face it generally anytime we do a little bit better than destroying the door people are happy right, right so right, right if you can um you know i mean just and and you know I, we preface every class with yes i know there are knocks boxes like yes i know there are windows right <laughs> so i don't teach windows because i i just, i generally think it's dangerous right yeah. and so that's not in our program um you come to one of our classes unless it's in an advanced class that we develop you know down the way um we don't talk about going into windows you know how to get into a window right yeah, a window. it's pretty straightforward so, you can figure it out <laughs> it's pretty straightforward so you know you talk to your blue in the face about lighting up the scene, making noise, calling the residents, you know, things like that. So you can safely, you know, do what you got to do. But, um, and so the other thing you said uh, about the type of entry you made when you're creating buy-in. So one thing that I think holds up a lot of people and a lot of processes is like, I want to change X. Okay. Well, what do you need to change that? Well, I need X, Y, and Z. I need to buy all this stuff. I need these new tools from Coastal Fire Training. I need. So when you come to our class, one thing I talk about is, look, it's no secret. We have an online store. We have a website and we sell all this stuff. But I'll teach you how to make a framing square, right? You have a toolbox on your apparatus, okay? So pliers, screwdrivers, Things that could be just gathered within your firehouse, cob, you know, a wedge that's got cobwebs on it in your locker. Consolidate the stuff, and for zero dollars, zero cents, you're a little bit better than you just were, right? Watch some videos, send us some messages, go do this stuff, fail, figure out why, and just keep going. And that's honestly what Roy and George and I did, and uh, and we, you know, people just essentially gravitated to it, you know, after that. And, uh, and it became, it became, <laughs> kind of became what it was. But yeah. What it is now. But, um, you know, it, 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 I mean, let's face it, it started out as a good company officer and a good driver that was like, you know, Hey, let's, uh, 
let's learn something new, right? Yeah. All of us technical guys, let's learn something new. And uh and we learned it and we loved it and it was cool. And um and the just the the benefit to the citizen, the benefit to the business owner cannot be understated. You know. And we used to talk a lot about Wendy's and stuff, right? So these calls, not that call. If you know how, right? If you know how to make the entry, then judgment will guide you the rest of the way. You'll know when. If you, if you know how, you'll know when, right? So and that could be for stretching a line, throwing a ladder. You know the technique. You know what you need to bring to the, you know. So, um, and when you mix all that in, man, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a win for the, for the citizen, for the business center, for your department, um, you know, for your forceful entry program, if you track things, if you track the amount of conventional entries you're doing on, you know, zero or low priority calls, right. Things like that. So, um, you know, it's stuff we've helped departments with, right. Analysis on like, why is risk management sending us a bill every month? Right. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> maybe we can help you. Maybe we can't. I, I don't know. Right. Firefighting is local. Um, we just did fire engineering training minutes and you'll hear me say like some of the terms I may use, you know, don't let them offend you. You know, you, it might not make sense to you, but you know um, you know what works here. And that's our thing, right? We have a way we have some, maybe it's not the way we have a way uh, we think it works pretty good. And it's a product of a lot of cool dudes that passed on a lot of good information to us. And we merely just, glued it all together yeah and, and and i think when you talk about the benefit to the citizens and us um you know there are definitely i have felt i don't want to say helpless but i mean i have felt like i was a bump on a log waiting for a key holder for an hour and a half to get to a location so that we could go in and figure out there was nothing going on uh and and Every obviously holders on drug dealer time Right. 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 Like, oh, I'll be there in an hour, two and a right. half hours later. No, no. And, and whoever the key holder is, unless it's the owner of the company, they're going to take their sweet ass time because oh, yeah. they're, they're getting paid by the hour if they have to come in on calls. Well, so. and fire alarms only go off at night. So, I mean, they're, you know, it's going to take a while. Right. Right. But if there's a better way and there's some things you can try and the circumstances warrant you trying those, i.e., this is a commercial occupancy that pays or is mandated to have a fire alarm. Their fire alarm has activated. They have called the fire department. Your duty to investigate begins then, right? So it's up to your company officer and your SOPs and whatever you guys normally do, right? But I can tell you, if you can stick a newspaper under the door and get that door, then you stick a newspaper under the next door and get that door, then generally no one, you know, because the business owner is not going to be upset that you're in there. Right? right. So the other side of this, we attack the physical side. Right. So um, I've done some podcasts on the like uh, brace yourself, physical penetration tester, it's a real job, but on the security side, we've done some podcasts, right. Some, some integration stuff and access control uh, cameras. We're attacking the physical side because we are supposed to be there. Yeah, that's one part of the weakness, right? The other side is a lot of times you're imitating egress when you're ingressing, right? And then other stuff is, uh, you know, things like the the quick set two piece that just unfortunately probably will never get fixed because everyone's copied the patent, you know, and that's just yeah. how they're made. So, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I you know I fell in love with the stuff and I and I've seen the benefits and I've um it means something to us every class when we sell out and dudes come up and they're like, man, like, you know, I, I had this call or, you know, something, you know, something we talked about or something we did where um, they had already applied it or, you know, they could have used it. And, um, and that's, that's it. all this is just rooted in just being a little bit better. Yeah. But, well, and even, you know, like you guys do some crazy ass shit. Like the, we've, <laughs> so we had a conversation down at the well, lake. Huh? Known for that. Yes. Yes. Uh, so when we were down at the lake, somebody was giving me a hard time cause I vape, right? Like I'm a vapor and, uh, somebody was like, Hey Melon, you should go try and break into the door with the vape thing. And you were like, yeah, that would actually work. Uh, I'll actually <laughs> do it. And so, uh, when I came back to Kansas, uh, after that conference, I actually added to my, through the lock bag, uh, a couple straws 
and you know everybody was laughing they're like why do you have bendy straws you know it's like the mcdonald's straw with the bendy thing and i said listen if i can get that thing shoved through the door and i can aim where i want to blow the vape like i always have my vape with me it's always on the truck or on the on the box and uh you know i'll try it and and we have not actually found a door yet to try it on but every time we were right in the middle of inspection so as soon as i find a door i'm going to videotape it but it's stuff like that that I would have never in a million years thought about. But after talking to you and you explaining the physics of why that system works and why it's going to think that it's a human being because of the vapor, because it's sensing something there. Um, yeah. I mean, nine times out of 10, it's going to work. Now there's probably a system yeah. out there that's going to know. Oh that yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So look for, uh, for everybody listening, I'll just, I'm just going to give a one minute. Uh, what the hell are we talking about? Yeah. Go for so, it. A very, very, very common request to exit sensor, which is the sensor that as you approach the door from the inside, it sees you, you hear a click, you might not hear a click, but whatever happens, the door unlocks, right? So what are those, uh, how do those work? So you have three different systems. One is motion only. All, the, all these videos are on our YouTube. Check out our YouTube and Facebook, but some systems are motion only. That's an antiquated system. Um, so the, the prevalent system, them right now is temperature differential doesn't care hot or cold and motion doesn't care if it's coming towards it or away from it so a vape a spit drink um in the firehouse i used to work at uh when i we uh we had badge access and i would wear shorts at night my wallet would be in bedside I, we, you could take off you could take a belt you could take a piece of webbing you take something from the bay throw it in the dryer slide it under the door okay heat heat the, the sensor says something's hotter or colder than the room and there's motion You're moving the belt back and forth, right? You're doing some serious shit in here. You're in, right? Are, are you moving mountains? No, but are you held behind a locked door? You shouldn't be held behind as a public safety professional with a duty to, to complete your job, you know, safely and efficiently without being, you know, we're not going to cowboy into, you know, places we don't need to be or doing things we don't need to do. Right. And, uh, and that's, if you know how, you know when, right? Yeah. Within the confines of your department. But given the good, you know, the right crew, uh, you just start feeding off this stuff because you just start getting in, right? You, you start getting in and, and everyone starts- It's addictive. It's yeah, really yeah, it's addictive. cool. It's cool. And, and you learn, like, maybe that applies to, to through the lock, but, you know, in the fire inspection world or, you know, there's other worlds where we blend with, you know, hey, that's- it's decent to know how that door operates, right? For my own, just my own sake of knowledge, right? And just, you learn little things like that. And um, you pick up a lot of home security things, right? You pick up a lot of, uh, when you're traveling, you know, you might, uh, you might have somebody in your apartment, you know, your condo, you know? Yeah. So, uh, gotta, you gotta, you know, uh, just little things. Or maybe like a door right? with like hundreds of thousands of dollars behind it that you gotta break into. I don't know. <laughs> it's pistol after dark. I don't know. So, and, and that's, you know, I think when I came into the fire service, it was very heavy as far as forcible entry on, uh, you know, we talked about limiting damage, but we didn't really limit damage. Like I can remember being taught to use the door hanger, uh, the door hanger for a, a negative pressure fan and spreading the door open, you know, moving the jam enough to where you could pop the door without damaging it. Well, every time we did that, we broke the wood. I mean, it, it, it wasn't the best option. Um, but even to the extent of we've had calls uh, in several instances where, you know, a kid locked themselves in the room because they were upset with mom or dad. And, you know, mom or dad, it's as simple as taking the doorknob off and opening that mechanism but they don't think about that because they don't know. Uh, and so, you know, we could show up and kick the door in or the cops could show up and kick the door in. That's what's going to happen. Right. Every time. But, yeah. But, you know, we can actually get in there and, you know, take the doorknob off and, and they feel, I have found that a lot of people feel dumb after doing it because they're like, Oh my God, I didn't even think about that. But that's our job. Like, that's why you called us. Well, and so, and like, even in like an unconscious person scenario, right? Like, Susie, I think Susie's in the bedroom. I can't find her. Door's locked and can't find her anywhere else in the house. She's a diabetic. Okay. Give it a, a little bit of push, a little bit of pull. I'm going to try the swipe tool, try the unforcer if it's an inward swing bed, bedroom door, right? Yeah. And then maybe if we have the time, peel the trim. Otherwise, 
kick the damn door. Who cares, right? Like that. That's not what we're we're over here saying. Like, oh my god, right? No, do what you got to do. But exercise some discipline when you do it, right? Because whoever called you there expects you to come there and fix the problem. You start kicking in doors, and then she's behind the door. Right. I mean, whatever, right? But you exercise just a little bit of discipline, a little bit of control. Now, when you're pushing and pulling on that door and using that swipe tool, you're listening. Maybe you hear a groaning. Maybe you hear an open window. Maybe you hear a vibrator. I don't know, right? But you're getting a, you're getting a clue, right? Yeah. You're getting the size up, right? We talked about making uh, hotel entries. They're like, oh, uh, uh, why do I need to learn that for a hotel? I will have a key card. Okay, you might have one. Right. I can get lucky and have two. But if there's a night last or something stupid on there like that, EMS call, I mean, my experience with hotel clerks is they've seen enough dead bodies. They don't want to help you, right? right. They, they're going to stand back and let you, they don't, it's not, you know, uh, it'll be maintenance's problem in the morning. And that's, unfortunately, a lot of people's uh, thought process, right? And I say unfortunately because I would say it's probably fair to say throughout the country, through the lock is a is a firefighter one and two skill, right? Like there's an NFPA skill sheet for that. But um, we generally have a, a basic understanding of it. And so we generally deliver a basic understanding at the academy, right. check the box and move on because irons are fun, irons are easy, conventional is conventional, right? And so um, you have departments like uh, Henrico County, Virginia that delivers an incredible through the lock program to the recruits um through company training they you know they cycle their their special services through it it's just incredible you know so uh you know back to the buy-in piece man you know al you're not alone right like there are people there are people that believe in this stuff all the way up to the top right every fire chief that's ever brought us in i you know i would say uh you know was happy when we left and and believed in it even more right and so um and they want their guys to use it right there and that's and well, how do you give your guys permission right it's like everyone's you know uh, scared to get in trouble just learn the stuff you gotta you know do do some toolbox entries do some training see what you can do it whatever you do if you screw up it's probably going to be less than what you were going to go to initially like right and that's our whole thing right that's our whole mantra escalation of damage yeah comments tactics all that right and uh, and we all know that can change. So, well, and 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 I'm going to put a little bit of melon flare on this whole thing. So, like, uh, I I am very well known, and and we have had this conversation. Actually, I believe we had this conversation in a little roundtable discussion. Uh, I am very well known for finding loopholes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, you know, with me, like, you know, having my own irons, there is no policy specifically at my department that says you may not bring your own iron or you may not use your own equipment. Now, I know that there are departments out there that say, you know, you cannot wear any PPE that is not issued to you, right? Uh, you know, things like that. So I went through and, and, and luckily my chief is, is a pretty cool dude. Like we, <laughs> I get along with him. We actually have a, a mutual respect and I can walk into his office and be like, Hey chief, I bought a new set of irons. Can I bring them in and, you know, get them tuned up? And he's like, yeah, whatever, you know, that's cool, whatever. So uh, when I did the respectful entry thing, I just said, you know, like, Hey cap, are we cool with this? Uh, and my captain was totally on board and I just went into my chief's office. I said, Hey, are we cool with this. But I also know that there's departments out there that, you know, if you go to anybody above your captain, they're going to be super reluctant. They don't want you doing it. And, you know, I would again say, as I've said in some of the other classes that I teach, uh, you know, Hey, if there's nothing specifically that says you can't have your own little tool bag with a couple hand tools in them, that's all we're talking about. You know, we're not talking yeah. about hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Right. Uh, and, and I love what you said, because my bag, my first uh, iteration of the bag was literally shit out of my toolbox in my garage that I had duplicates of. I'm like, oh, I don't need three vice grips. I don't need three of these. I don't need two of these channel locks. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I think that you can very easily do it. And it's something that you don't necessarily have to go all the way through those steps in the very beginning, learn how to do it, practice how to do it, get good at it, um, and keep that bag with you until that opportunity arises. And then, you know, as long as you have the support of your crew, do it, and then you have evidence to go forward. Well, 
Yeah. So the culture of every department is different, right? Like, so if you work in a 10, 10 man department, then if, you know, say there's a training officer, like he probably wants to be involved in everything, right? right? That's, that's fair. Um, but you start multiplying those numbers and, and generally it gets back to the station level, right? So like know who your people are that are staunchly opposed. And I would dare say, just educate them, just sit down and like show them some videos, make a prop. Like there's nothing that we won't send you or show you pictures of, or, you know, do we have blueprints for everything? No, but I got a picture and <laughs> right. you probably, you probably got a guy that can build it right. And get pretty damn close. Right. And, um, and so, and then that's how you, you know, build your lab, right. We build his props. We build all this, you know, all these other things, um, all very important stuff, of course, but, um, you know, it's just, uh, and, and for the guys that are, uh, maybe in a rut or whatever, you know, they, they just haven't found that one thing they like a lot of people that are, that are mechanical in nature or technical in nature, maybe have some background in this stuff already, maybe understand it a lot more than maybe you, right? Because you never know who you're talking to, right? I mean, we've had locksmiths come to the class. We've had, you know, all kinds of stuff. And it's, uh, it's always interesting to talk to everybody. But, um, yeah, I mean, just the, uh, the success is what sells it, you know, the entries. And just the – and I think for, the, for the, uh, the more seasoned crew, I don't keep saying older, I think the the proof is not even in the entry. It's in them knowing what the alternative would have been. Right. Right. And well, damn, what we always do, maybe that's, Hey, is this going to work every time? Hey, maybe not, I, you know, but, and that's why, you know, back to our class, our classes, why are they different? Real locks? Like everything's real, right? Yeah. There's not a simulated mortise lock. You're bra like brand new out of the package. The only prop is the, is the thing that holds it, right? The thing that holds the lock, you know, the door. Um, but you're breaking real locks. So different things happen every single time. You're going to get to see 30 rim locks, you know, and different things happen in different recovery methods. So, um, you know, more realistic training leads to a more realistic fireground execution or a, you know, scene execution. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, metallurgy is, is, it's a weird thing, you know, and, and we've talked to one of our uh, instructors with Valor. Uh, is, he sells steel and metal. And uh, it's so funny to talk to him about, he's like, man, you won't believe, you know, like two pieces of metal that came from the same stock will have completely different parts of it because of how the metal is forged and how it's designed. And, and it's no different than when we're trying to get things to fail. You're never probably going to have two locks that fail identically um, in the same exact place. So by doing those reps over and over again, it's just getting you better and better and better. You, you feel it right when you're grinding a real mortise cylinder with a real set screw out of a more brand new mortise cartridge over and over and over in the classes. You, you see it, you feel it, you get to see, you know, and, uh, and I mean, you know, it, it, it transitions. I've seen it, right. I've seen it from people that didn't even know how to use vice grips. Right. And then very, in a very short amount of time, they're like, Hey, uh, is this one of those calls? Like, yeah, man, I think so. Yeah. You know, what do you think? Let's do it. So, and it's, you know, I think, uh, I think we put a little too much pressure on ourselves. Like, Oh God, what are we doing? You're doing your job. Right. And for the most part, it, you know, obviously you know, within the confines of your department and, you know, your company officer, et cetera, et cetera. But, but generally, you know, we have, a, we have a duty to investigate. So, you know, this might be the, okay, fire alarm drop. And there is a trash can smoldering inside at the dollar store. Big glass storefront. It ain't going nowhere but the trash can but the trash can is on fire. We got to go in. Do we destroy their door and make this a big circus that it does not need to be? Or a little bit of discipline, a little bit of the tools you always get made fun of for having, right? And we get in and we're good. Then everybody's happy. So I can actually answer that for you. You, you, you go through the lock and then you send the truck dude in with the can yeah. and, and cancel the engine. Hell yeah. He probably didn't even use the can, right? He just carried it outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's the best one. Is just pick it up. I always think back to, I think that video is in, uh, was that in like Jersey or something? 
where they pull up and that storefront is just ripping and the dude and somebody's like grab the can grab the can and they just bust the window out and just spray it with the can it's uh yeah yeah i know i know what you're talking about yeah no that's i always go back to that so okay so just changing gears a little bit so i'm gonna ask you your opinion what is and it doesn't even have to be through the lock forcible entry what is your favorite hand tool So I'll preface Todd Shepard's going to love this. So I don't have, I have very few favorites in life, right? I don't idolize sports heroes. I don't idolize politicians. I don't, I don't uh, have a favorite, yeah, maybe sports team, right? But not a whole lot of like things that, right? Because things like tools are specific purpose, right? And that's what I like, right? I don't like multi-tools. So one thing that does a couple things okay is just that, right? So if I'm doing this task, I want that tool. So for me, what did that look like at work? An eight pound ax um, at the end of Maximus Rex, um, Todd made me a believer, but it was just a, a straight up pro bar, not modified in any way other than just, you know, the normal stuff, the shoulders and things like that. But um, in, my, in my s and Rex, right? Or, um, for quite a while, I was carrying uh, Brian McNulty's uh, ZB tool. I mean, that thing is killer, yeah. killer on deadbolts, unmatched, cannot be beaten. Best, I mean, wood door with a deadbolt, all day, right? Um, Andrew Broussard swears by it. I mean, it's a good tool, right? So, if I, like, if I had to pick one, just a thirty-inch pro bar, straight up, right? Just just give it to me straight up with an eight pound axe and uh, I can do a whole lot with that. And I can do some through the lock stuff. Right. And I'm, I'm never going to chew my bar down because that's not what it's for. Right. That's right. not why I brought it forward. I brought my bag forward to see what I can do. Then the S and D Rex is sitting right here. The ZB tool is sitting right here. So if we got to ramp it up a little bit, but keep it to door and lock, right. And not frame yet. And then, because we always bring our irons forward no matter what the irons are there if whatever you know whatever you you see hear, smell when you get to the door right or when you start to get it open so and then and then uh yeah man all of it i want it all no, so, uh I think a lot a lock puller for pulling locks a you know a bar for forcing doors i mean you know give me a host to put out fires and a ladder to climb on buildings i mean i I don't know. Listen, man, you're you're John That's a Buttrick. Shitty answer to your question. You're no, no, no. You're John <laughs> from Coastal Fire Training. You can have as many effing tools as you want. Like, oh no, shit, man. Well, and, okay. So uh, I'll answer my favorite. What's your favorite? My favorite yeah. tool. My favorite tool is also the Pro Bar, and and I think it's because you know we can, again, do multiple things, and, and I look at the Pro Bar a little bit different than some. Yes, it is a multi-purpose bar, but it's a multi-purpose bar with different ends. So each end does something. Each part of it does something. Um, you know, I'm not a huge fan, and I've seen some tools out there where it's got, you know, multiple different purposes on one end, like a gas shut off, and then it's got like a little O2 wrench, and you can force a door, and you can pull a lock, and you can do, and I'm like, whoa, 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 that's way too much shit. So, uh, you know, I think sim simplicity wise, um, that's okay. Uh, I actually grew up with a, I, it was the first hand tool that I ever bought. I was like 18 years old. I didn't know what the hell it was, but I was like, that's a cool little mini bar and I'm going to buy it. And uh, it ended up being an officer's tool from Firehooks Unlimited. And so it came with the shove knife. It came with the carry key. Uh, and it had the little rubber deal in the cell text that you slid the yep. carry key down in. And so I didn't really know what the hell it was. I still have it. Uh, it's downstairs in the basement. I kind of keep it for, for, uh, just good old memory's sake, but, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, you could pull locks with it. You could pop a window with it. You could do a lot of different things. Um, but it was compact. You could carry it with you. Um, but think about the name of the tool, right? Officer's tool. So 360 and, maybe drop it on the front porch once you commit. So yeah. 
a multi-purpose job doing a multi, like I'm down with that, right? Because he's carrying it because he's like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to find. Maybe a dog, maybe yeah. a person, maybe a door. I don't know. Right. But like, so in that scenario where you like, you're like, and plus you can't carry the whole truck with you. Like I respect right. that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Most people, but if you have a three or four man truck and you're going to do a door entry and you're a truck company or you're a rescue, you're some kind of special service. Like this is your forte, right? Like this is what you're supposed to be good at. Um, yeah. And I so love your, I love your, you know, the escalation of force and the escalation of damage is something that we've, we've discussed at length. And I think it's so important for us in the fire service to have that mindset because when we look at, you know, okay, I'm going to start by trying to go through the lock. If that doesn't work, I'm going to try and do this. If that doesn't work, you know, and then the last resort is I'm going to actually physically damage the building. Um, it's, it's no different than, and I, everyone's going to kill me for saying this. It is no different than an EMS algorithm. Okay. I, you show literally up, just stole my words. <laughs> I mean, I'm a paramedic. If you show up and they're dead, viable shock them. Right. But if they're not and they're breathing, then you're going to, okay, you're going to back up and you're going to start here. And you might skip around a little bit like, yep. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm a para nerd as well. And so, you know, like when I, I'm really, really, really aggressive about my airway management and as a paramedic, I've always, um, taken we lost so many listeners just now talking about EMS. I, you know, I know, I know it's going to be very short lived. It's going to be very short lived. Um, but I do, I take, I do, I do take airway management very seriously. And so, uh, you know, we've always had that escalation of stuff like, I'm going to try nasal cannula. If that doesn't work, I'm going to go to a non rebreather If that doesn't work, I'm going to start bagging them. If that doesn't work, I'm going to paralyze them, sedate them, and, and innovate them. And I feel like no matter whether you're doing EMS, prevention, fire uh, suppression, or hazmat, it's not a unique thing. Like we have that escalation in all those. It's places. literally daily life and how you, you know, go about like you analyze things you skip certain steps because those steps are not warranted in this situation. Yep. You use what you know and you use what you think you know and yep. see what you get, right? And sometimes you'll be surprised and sometimes you'll be disappointed. And that is okay, that is life. But no matter what, as long as you learn something, unless you have the, the worst crew in the world, you know, if you were the one spearheading this and they're beating you up more than, you know, and just casual joking, then you're trying, right? And you're in, um, and, and the failure rates aren't even that high, right? Like you're, you're probably going to get in. You're probably going to, you know, surprise some people. So, um, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That came up. I like that. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Okay. So what is the future? And I, I'm asking you this because now I get to ask this question. So, so what is, where, where's Coastal? Where are you guys headed? What's the next thing on the horizon? Like what's, what's up? Uh, right now. So we, uh, COVID, COVID, uh, the COVID domino effect hit us with orders. So, um, we're, you know, getting all the orders out everything's, um, getting caught up. So that's good. Um, FDIC 2021, uh, hopefully that happens, right? <laughs> we're, uh, we're both crossing our fingers, yeah. man. We're both yeah. hoping we get to go. Yeah. <clears throat> um, we just shot fire engineering training minutes. Uh, Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. Zach Velvis, he, uh, you know, him and his fire chief, they uh, they opened up the firehouse to us the, the day after our class. And uh, <clears throat> we shot fire engineering training minutes there. So, uh, you know, that'll be forthcoming. Um, man, and just, uh, you know, uh, we're looking at an advanced program. I mean, there's, we got, you know, I have a, I have an incredible group of guys um, that, that keep this thing going, even when, uh, you know, I'm not going right. So they, uh, we got an awesome team and there's always a good idea on the table. I mean, um, we'll probably be doing something internet based very, very soon. Uh, it's going to be a spin. It's not going to be, it's not going to be a PowerPoint. It's not going to be a boring lecture. Um, but, uh, you know, something fun to just kind of, kind of break it up and, uh, you know, and you have conversations like this and even the algorithm conversation, right? At some point you have to air that out. Like, Hey, all we're doing is just going through the thought process, right? I'm considering whether I'm going to use these tools. So, um, you know, and then you, where do you, you go from that? Well, maybe a, a little webinar, right? And then, Hey, uh, all right, well, let's go try it. Maybe not. That guy sucks. 
Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to say that. Um, yeah, I mean, we got, you know, our, our class schedule's full, so that's, that's good. Um, we got a couple months, and I think in the late 2021 that we're, um, you know, we can still schedule, but that's been that's been the humbling part of this. I mean, this you know the store is the, the store is definitely one aspect. Um, you know, and, and the train you know we're we're doing two things right. We got the training side of the house, um, you know, and we're always humbled to just we've you know we haven't had a bad class and we meet the coolest guys and the, go to the coolest places and um, you know everyone's just so yeah I, I don't know the brotherhood is alive and well despite what you may hear or what anyone else may hear you know it might not be alive and well in your circle at the very moment but generally you know come to lake ozarks or come to somewhere like that and uh and soak it up and you know um <clears throat> and you'll meet like-minded individuals because like we talked about you know um off camera earlier we're not all gonna you know agree on everything and that's okay you know so um yeah way off topic from uh where oh going. that's no, you're spot on. And, and I mean, we are we are turning it up. I mean, so the classes are, you know, the classes are are being, you know, they're out there, they're happening. That's awesome. I'm really looking forward to FDIC. Um, and then from the store point, you know, um, some supply chain issues and just some, you know, other circumstances hit us. But, but everything's, you know, everything is full uh, full speed ahead. You know, orders are going out, so um, it feels good to be in a good place and. Uh, and then just continue working with awesome people like Trevor Williams and the Williams key, you know, and back, like back to the store side. I mean, yeah, we run a store and, you know, uh, it's just one side of it. Right. But like what I think is kind of cool about coastal and what, what's been the, the neat experience for me being a guy that like just really likes that brotherhood aspect, right. Uh, across the country, always going to FDIC as a kid is, like when you when you come to our website or you come to us or you know whatever right you're using tool like everything in that bag everything on our website um you know for the most part with the exception of like sparrows right but a fireman developed that right like right. john zauer jb tool scott mccann that axe bill walters swipe tool like randy gerald a couple you know of our projects so you know trevor williams i mean the list goes on um and it's it's like-minded guys taking care of like-minded guys who have a similar passion and, you know, want to get this stuff to the masses. So those that are hungry, like Al, he's like, man, do I want to buy this thing and bring it to work? Or are they going to make fun of me all day? Man, pick up a screwdriver off the toolbox, go show them something cool and <laughs> right. you know, start there. You know, and that's, and that's, you know, it's like, um, I don't know. It's, it's been fun. It's been a heck of a ride, you know, but we wouldn't be, you know, we wouldn't be anywhere um, without the guys, you know, like I said, um, on my team. I mean, I can talk about that all day long. They're, uh, they're pretty incredible dudes. Um, but, you know, just our mentors and, uh, you know, everyone that fed us this information and shared their PowerPoints or called us on the phone or, you know, Brian Mastin, I mean, I, you know, we would talk at length, you know, when the framing square broke the internet, broke truck floor training, like, you know, I'm like, Hey, why does that work? When does it not work? And why, like, Hey, I got a door here that it's not working. Right. You know? Um, and just through a million conversations like that with, you know, like-minded guys and, and digging into the history, right. Digging into the, the San Francisco force country manual, the FDMI force and, um, and really learning it. And then, and then you start to like realize like, eh, not that new, not that special, not that different, just something area of improvement, yeah. right? It's just something we can do, way. something we can do a little bit better. And looking at the history of it, because, you know, and I know we've, I'm, I'm assuming you've talked to Bob Farrell at some point, uh, you know, there are people anybody that's talked to Bob knows how it is to talk to Bob, which is, <laughs> you're going to be on the phone for like an hour and a half. And uh, you know, one of the nicest dudes to talk to, but you know, just hearing the history of kind of how some of those tools were developed, um, you know, and, and looking at how you're presenting the information, I was really blown away when I sat through your class at the lake, um, just talking about the history of it and the history of why we're doing what we're doing and then getting into the history of the locks and like, Hey, they found out that if you did this, 
the lock failed. So as a security measure, they added this lock nut. And if you don't get through that lock nut, it's not going to be able to. And I'm just like, damn. It, without knowing all that, you yeah. would never be able to defeat that lock. And it's something as simple as a little lock nut or a little washer or a little set screw. Um, and so, yeah, I think the, the history of it and knowing kind of where we came from uh, is so important. And uh, that's, I love the fact that you guys do that. And, and all of your instructors are so good about that. What a lot of it was out of necessity, right? And you got to look at where maybe the tool was developed. So, you know, we could beat up the K tool all day long, but it was developed for a certain type of, you know, rim and mortar cylinder. Yep. And, you know, if you've put it on a residential deadbolt and beat it down, I tell people you could have just taken a mallet and just beat the deadbolt down, right? Because, I mean, that's essentially what you're doing. Um, and we got a technique for that, right? That is a viable option depending on, you know, what kind of deadbolt you got and something you can try. But, uh, you know, we talk about, you know, everywhere I've ever worked hat has had K tools on the truck. And as we've traveled the country, um, I mean, there are places that don't even have K tools. Right. Um, so, you know, and then they don't have anything and it's like, well, okay. I like, I get it. May not run these calls a lot. And when you do, it's permissible to just do whatever. And the norm, the societal norm is all oh, the fucking fire department <laughs> came, came to my house. Right. Yeah. So, um, and I think to a certain point we play on that because that, that allows us to be lazy and go, you know, back to the recliner and, you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah, like I said earlier, I mean, <clears throat> it's all rooted in just being a little bit better, right? Like the guys on my team, the, the guys I just spoke about that develop these tools, it's just like just something for the fire service to give back what it's already given to all of us. Right. Um, and then, you know, and then you meet people, right? You travel and you meet the coolest people and have the greatest times. And uh, <laughs> coastal after dark. <laughs> but uh, well, that's yeah, a reoccurring, that's a reoccurring theme. And you, you, uh, yeah. you got to stop you and, and and throw this out there. Giving back, and and you know, we we just uh, the other day talked to Lex uh, Shady, and uh, before that, we talked to Chris Tennyson, and you know, I think they both made the comment that they learned something and that the only request from the person that taught them was to pass it along to somebody else. And I hear that over and over and over again. And I've said it to you, you've said it to other people. Uh, you know, we all have that similar mindset of, listen, I will tell you everything that I have in my toolbox. The only thing I want you to do is pass it on to the next person. Yep. So I love there- hearing that. Mine is driven by a thirst of like, I want to give you something. So you give me something, right? I'm going to give you something that maybe you don't have, but I'm just hoping, you know, like, uh, you know, we, we talk about locks that were blue in the face, but like put me on an electrical panel on an HVAC run. Right. Got guys that, that are, you know, they're good at it. They know what they're doing. If I took the time, I could probably be half as good as they are, but I don't take the time. Right. So that's why I suck on those calls. So it's like, you know, you got, um, you know, people that are good, you have to, um, that's gotta be a two way street. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> no, for sure. So, well, good. So, uh, how can people reach you? So give us your website. Give us all Crystal your, fire, yeah, sorry. And, uh, sorry, I cut you off all the social media stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, coastal fire training.com. Coastal Fire Training on Facebook, Coastal Fire Training on Instagram, and Coastal underscore Fire on Twitter, and uh, Coastal Fire Training on our YouTube as well. Uh, if you're interested in what uh, you know, some of the stuff we just spoke about, the vast amount of media is on the Facebook, and second to that is the YouTube. If you run into a lock that you just can't get or something went south, whatever, or a success story, we get a lot of those too, hit us up, man. Take a video. Take a picture take a bunch of pictures, whatever. You don't got to know what you're looking at. Just send it to us. And then, Hey, on the next one, cause it's probably in a multifamily, you know, uh, you might run that same door, that same lock. Right. So, um, yeah. And that's, that's, that's the other cool thing, right. Is, uh, is when we, you know, the store does well and, and people hit us up and like, Hey, I, I got in with these tools. Like, you know, yeah, that's gotta be a good feeling back to Al. It's cool. It's cool. You know, um, COVID in the last couple of months were, were hard on, uh, you know, on a lot of things, but, um, 
bouncing back. Everything's everything's good. Good. Well, we're looking forward to seeing how it goes. We we look forward to uh, you know working with you guys. We've always had uh, you know similar interests, and I know we'll be back uh, at the lake and uh, you know just doing doing fun stuff, man. It's always a good time when when we get the group together and. Uh, oh, yeah. As long as security yeah. doesn't show up, we're good. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> once a night is that a is that average amount of security responses one should see? I mean, you know, when you know the yeah. guy by first name basis, you're like, hey, yeah. Shit. <laughs> that was that was that was some crazy stuff. But yeah. Uh, but no, it's yeah. it's good, man. I can't thank you enough for your time. Uh, you know, and, and definitely sharing your knowledge and sharing your passion. Uh, as always, with our stuff with the Q and A, you can send us your messages. I can't make this shit up all day long, so I need you guys to send in messages. You guys have been awesome. Uh, we have gotten inundated with questions, and I'm still kind of sifting through them. Uh, but keep them coming. You know, we love them. I know uh, John and Lex and uh, Chris and everybody that's done the Q and A uh, has enjoyed doing it, and it's it's our way to give back, and it's our way to let you guys kind of pick our brains and, and see what we think about stuff. So uh, as always, you can uh, get a hold of us on social media, Valor Fire Training, or you can send me a message at david at valorfiretraining.com. So until we talk to you guys the next time, stay safe, wash your hands, wear your mask, all that good stuff. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, David. All right, man. Take care. All right, man.